Hi there, this is Pam. Today I have another Back to Basics video for you and I am going to make simil something similar to this one but I'm going to use different colors today. This shows you how to do a background paper using stamps and the colors that I used on this one uh, is Stampin' Up! They're Real Red and Coastal Cabana and my Coastal Cabana is just about gone. I don't have a reinker for it, so I'm going to use um, different colors today. But I'm going to make the same basic layout as this card here. This is um, just the card panel. I haven't put it on a card yet. But anyways, here's the stamp set that I use. It's from Simon Says Stamp. It has all these cute little flowers, and I've used it quite often. I actually need to take them and wash them off because they don't really stick to the panel anymore. That's the nice thing about photopolymer. You can take it right to the sink and just wash them with soap and water and it'll make them a lot stickier so they'll stick to your block. And I'm going to use the same sentiment. I may use a different, this stamp here I didn't use that image there on this card. I may use it on this one. We'll see. But the colors that I'm going to use on this one is Not Quite Navy and Sweet Sugar Plum. I have mine on this little homemade ink pad that I made, my uh, ink pad. But anyways, that's the colors that we're going to use. So same basic layout as this one. This panel here is cut at 4 inches by five and a quarter so it will leave a nice border uh, around the card when you put it on a base so there's our white panel and I will start the same I'm going to use the same stamp that I used uh, to start my other one with it's this larger flower and I'm going to start with the blue And we'll just ink that one. There's so many different options that you can do making your own background paper with stamps. So before you start getting like a big paper hoard, like a lot of us start acquiring over the years, um, it's still nice to make your own background paper um, with stamps as long as you have uh, ink colors. You can do different looks. Uh, if you're making it for someone special, you can use their favorite colors. Spring, summer, fall, winter. Whatever you prefer. And the basic rule of decorating or stamping is um, the rule of three or the rule of five. Uh, for some reason, that seems to be pleasing to the eye if you have odd numbers I'm not real sure why but even in like home decor they use the rule of three or five nothing is ever even so I tend to do the same thing all right so I'm gonna clean my stamp and I have my little stamp scrubber here this actually is just a painting I think this is for painting I think that's what this one was from. But if you go to the paint department in the hardware store, you can buy those those little brush. It's like a an edger, I think they call it, or something like that. It w works just as good as a, a stamp, stamp cleaner. It's made out of the same material. All right, so we're going to put that one aside for a minute. And we'll get this little one here, and we'll do that one in the... Um, sweet sugar plum. I think I will go back and use that flower there uh, with the sweet sugar plum. That's what I did with my other one. Now after you get your colors, your stamps, um, where you like them to be, then you can just keep adding more. And it doesn't matter if you layer them. You know, if you get them on top of each other, it doesn't matter. So just randomly stamp wherever you think it looks nice. 
and I am going to leave a space uh, in this area the same as the other one I did for the sentiment. So don't uh, completely cover it. Do leave a little space there. And we'll do five of this one. You don't have to. You can whatever you like. But like I said, for some reason, the rule of three and five, it does apply to paper crafts. All right, so I'm going to clean this one off. And we will start, yeah, I guess we can do a uh, blue one. Let's try this one. I, I said I didn't use this stamp. Um, that little, like, burst kind of looks like a starburst type thing. We'll use that one this time. And fill in some spaces. And see that ink all over my my stamping block? That doesn't matter. I will wipe it off. But yeah, that's cute. I like that one. And I do have an old t-shirt that I use um, for wiping off my stamps and my ink blocks. That's handy to have. It gets the ink a lot more of the ink off so it's not directly onto your stamp scrubber. All right. And I think I will take that little swirly. Let's see how that shows up in the center of these. That looks good. Kind of a tone on tone look. Cute. Then I also is going to stamp those just here and there. All around. Filling in. Let's see. That's three. Four. And you do want your stamps to go off the edge. Um, that looks more na like naturally, like you cut uh, a paper, a piece of pattern paper panel down. Make it go off the edge just a little bit. And we'll do this stamp again. And we're going to do that in the Sweet Sugar Plum. Get that blew out of the way. And you can also, I said, this is a... This is just a little plastic container that I took some uh, Rangers, I can't even remember what it's called, it's felt. You can make your own stamp pad from it, it's just a felt pad. Uh, and I used a piece of Velcro in the, in the lid. Um, I, I did that just for trying to save space. Actually I think I like the full ink pad a little better. It didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to, but um, for the time being, that's all I have. I don't have the big ones yet, but I am about to place another order through Stampin' Up. It is their celebration, after all. Can't beat getting free stuff. So, those ink pads. It's just that I have so many ink pads. I can't even remember how many I counted the last time. I probably have over 80. I'm just running out of room. But I like the full ink pads. Uh-oh. No, oh, that's not too bad. My stamp stuck to the paper. Photopolymer will do that. But that's all right. And you can stamp off also. If you don't want it, if you want it um, a different look, I'll just do it just because I did it over there on accident. So I may as well make it look like it's meant to be. See how you get a totally different color there? And then you can even stamp it a third time and you'll get an even lighter color. So if you want even more variation, why well, you can do that too. So that's coming along. Let's see what else I have. That little 
I have that little, you can't really see it, it's so tiny. And I have actually lost a stamp out of that set. I don't, I still have never found it. It's been gone for over a year, but um, this little spotty one, you'll be able to see it once I stamp it in the center there. Just add something a little extra to those flowers. And then I'll also take this and stamp it around too. Here and there. Wherever there's an empty space. And just fill it in. Three, four. I think I will go back with some blue. I said, whatever you like. If you like it right where it's at, why then you can just stop and and leave it at that. But if you want more layers and more patterns, well, I just keep going. And the blue, let's see. I didn't use this outlined flower in the blue. So let's do some of those. Whoops, and look, see us. I said leave a space for your um, sentiment. Didn't do that either. Just kept right on stamping. I guess I could probably fit it in there. I think it's cute. And I suppose we'll put that one in there. Alright, I think that's probably pretty good. I should quit so I can have a spot for that sentiment. It's small enough. I do believe I can get it in there. So, I will do that in the darkest color, which is the navy. And it's that one. And it's clear stamps. So you can line it up. Uh, you don't need your uh, stamp a majig tool. Or, I just actually did buy a Stamp Perfect. I did a video on that not too long ago. That is awesome. I do love that tool. But for something like this, you don't really need it. You can line it up yourself, as long as you don't drop the stamp. Like I did there. Yeah, that fits in there just fine. So yeah, that makes a cute pattern paper design. And if you want more, like I said, if you think whatever you like, it's totally up to you. Whatever colors that you want to use, that's fine. I don't have, I didn't grab a card base. Sorry, I just reached around there and got my piece of whole card stock. I don't know which one I would put that with. That's probably too dark. I would probably go with the sugar plum as a background or for the card, for the card base on that. And that would be just a eight and a half by 11 piece of card stock cut in half for your card base. So that is my back to basics video for today. I said see two totally different looks depending on what colors that you choose. Uh, there's just so many options for it. This this one here are my favorite color combos. I love red and turquoise together. I don't know why. I just think that's pretty. But this one's pretty also. I like that sweet sugar plum and not quite navy. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.